I was looking through the local bourbon shells and found a bottle of Rebel 100 for $19.99. If that's not a budget bourbon find, I don't know what is. We're gonna taste it, tell you what we think about it, talk a little bit about it. Let's get into it. Welcome to Stefan Whiskey. I'm Aaron. I'm Josh. Today we went, or I went, perusing the local bourbon shells and found a bottle that was inexpensive. This is our version of a bourbon hunting video because I don't want to take a camera into a store. That feels weird to me. <laughs> but we are looking around at budget bottles for you guys. This is a recurring series we're doing over on the channel every month where I go and try to find something that might be of interest that we don't know how we feel about yeah. it, but we're going to taste it and find out. I don't think I've ever about. had this bourbon before. Yeah. So let's get into it. We are drinking today Rebel 100. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it, and we'll talk a little bit more about the product after the fact. But around here, we care about what the glass tastes like, first and foremost. Not so. the glass itself, what's in the glass. Right. Let's get into it on the nose. It smells good. It smells like typical bourbon, but kind of dusty <laughs> not old but like dust i can kind of see you there to me this is coming across like bread and okay. caramel oh i'm not getting caramel but i can see like breadiness maybe the dust is like a yeastiness that i'm getting on yeah. the nose i think that's what we're reading but it's it seems very soft and simple on the nose mm -hmm. i don't even really detect many flavors beyond that it, and those are just kind of coalescing into this one thing that i'm trying to pull apart as whatever I'm getting, but it's kind of just the one thing that it is. Generally sweet smelling bourbon, pretty tame in the glass, not getting much I ethanol at all. I'm not getting ethanol, but I feel like there might be some spice to this just based on the nose. Okay. Well, we do know it's a hundred proof because it says it right on the okay. bottle. Let's get into the palate. There's like a dry spice. It's like a dry rubbed rib <laughs> or chicken wing, chicken wing. Mm. Wow, you're getting more off this than I am. It does have some spiciness and it is lingering in the background. Mm -hmm. So this is really interesting. I didn't know what to expect and there is some gone out of this bottle and I don't know why. We didn't buy it open on the shelf, but I did buy have this. Have you tried it? I don't know. Maybe I put it into a head to head or something okay. for the channel. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Okay. I did get this quite a few months back when I was in Kentucky for a trip, walked into a store looking around for something else, JTS Brown. Ended up seeing this for $19.99. So is it still $19.99? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I verified before we started this okay. video. Um, but yeah, it. I got it because I thought it would be interesting to try for the channel. I've heard Will and Grease over at the podcast talk about their affinity for this uh, particular product. But I do know that based on what it is, I didn't know how we would feel about mm -hmm. it. So I just wanted to see if it was something worth considering. Because it's been a stalwart on the shelves. Yeah. Like a lot of people probably pass it by. I feel like I'm going to take one more sip, but then I have thoughts. Okay. So I feel like this is packing a little bit of spice, a little bit of oak, but it's missing the other flavors that I want in a bourbon specifically. Yeah, I can 100% relate to you there because I'm getting that thread of caramel. See, I'm not getting any other like sweet flavors, dark yeah. flavors. I'm getting spice and wood. Yeah. Well, in the wood, it it's hitting me like young oak and a little bit of nuttiness, which I know I'm drinking Rebel, so I'm kind of predisposed to thinking there might be a little bit of nuttiness in there. And I do get nuttiness and oak confused on younger pours. Mm. We do know that this is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And to my knowledge, it does not have an age statement on it, which means that it is at least four years old. So to be listed as okay. straight bourbon whiskey, you have to be at least two years old to be listed as straight bourbon whiskey with no age statement on the bottle. It has to be four years old. At least, minimum. At least, minimum. Okay. So we know okay. it, We know it's at least four years old and it is 100 proof. And we do know that this is a weeded bourbon. Oh, interesting. I did not yes. know that. We now know that, but we did not know that before. I well, wasn't- Defiantly smooth okay. weeded bourbon. That's why I didn't show you the bottle. I literally but... haven't read that label. I know. I never read any of these labels. <laughs> Um, I just drink what you give me. Um, to be fair for that, I did not pick up a weeded funk that I normally will get on some weeders. Um, so yeah, kudos to that for not having that funk that usually for me is off-putting for yeah. weeded bourbons, but that was good. Didn't, I didn't pick up on that. 
Yeah. What do you think about this in the context of the $20 price tag? For $20, I'm not mad at it. It honestly probably wouldn't be something I would want to drink like on the regular. So even at $20, I feel like I, I wouldn't be mad to spend that money, but I probably wouldn't. I would probably be, probably put it with another $20 and get something else. Yeah. Or for $20, I think products we like a little bit more than this for me personally are Evan or um, Early Times Bottled and Bond. You like Evan Williams Bottled and the Bond? The white label one? The white label. Yeah, I do. And then it's I, a little sweeter. Yeah. And then we both like Wild Turkey 101 more than this. Those types of products seem to have a little bit more going on on the flavor spectrum. Mm -hmm. With this particular one, I'm surprised. I guess I shouldn't be surprised because it is a we did bourbon they do generally tend to skew low on spice although it has some spice i got some spice and, and it was a good amount of spice like it wasn't um bad it was a nice balanced spiciness yeah not heavy-handed <laughs> not heavy-handed but it is pretty soft on the palate other than that little bit of spice yeah not really getting much alcohol or ethanol on it at mm -hmm. all when you're drinking a young whiskey you can get alcohol or ethanol mm -hmm. this doesn't come across with that this comes across as younger whiskey that just doesn't have a lot of complexity to it. It's yeah. kind of generally sweet, I agree. simple, generally good. And then on the back end, I get a little bit of, of a very faint green apple note on the back end. Sure. Like a slight tart sweetness. Tart. Tart is a good word. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, overall, pretty enjoyable. Again, I don't think this yeah. is something that I would be reaching for all that often, personally speaking. It just doesn't fit my profile. Same. It doesn't quite have the brighter fruit notes or the darker fruit notes that I want. It doesn't have the brown sugar or the caramel to the level that I like, but yeah, I Would think it's you, generally a pretty good value. Could you see this being successfully mixed in something like a drier cocktail? I feel like this would go well in like a drier cocktail, a less sweet cocktail. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, I think for 20 bucks, you're not out much if you buy it. It's not bad. Yeah. Like I, I if you bought this, I would like you did buy this yeah. and I'm not mad that you bought it right. for the price. What I was saying was for 20 bucks, you're not out much, buy it, see if you like it, neat, try it on ice, try it in a cocktail. You're not really missing out on much. And maybe you do like it neat more than we do because our palates are our yeah. own and everybody's palate is different. Even our palates differ oftentimes. So you might love this, but what I can definitively say, I feel like is that this is not at all a ripoff at 20 bucks. Correct. This is I agree. Very good value for the money. You're getting a, a major legacy heritage distillery product. That is quite nice. And for a hundred proof, I could see this being more approachable than some of the other things that we tend to prefer, Fair. like the Wild Turkey 101, yeah. Evan Williams White Label, yeah. Early Times Bottle of Bond. Agree. This might be a little bit more approachable because of the weeded profile and the softness on the palate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's our budget bourbon find for this month. Let us know down in the comments below what you think of Rebel 100. Let us know what other budget products we need to be looking for on the shelves. Try to keep it around $30 or so. We might go a little bit above that, but we want to keep a three at the beginning of the number. 30 or less, yeah. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's oh, it for today. Check out our Patreon community if you want. Oh, we yeah. got a fantastic community. That's down in the video description below. That's where the video description exists, down below. I don't probably need to specify that, but yeah. Well, maybe one day YouTube will put it up above. Who knows? Things change all the time. <laughs> life, is, life is nothing but change. <laughs> But we have a great community, people helping each other find stuff, share samples, talk whiskey all day long. That's where we release our barrel picks, do bonus content, yeah. extra live streams for our Patreon community, all kinds of stuff over there. And if you would like some apparel, you can get that at stuffandwhiskey.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. Almost, for, almost forgot to say that. Just want to let you know in case you didn't know. Yeah. If, if you, you don't, don't know, know, now you know. know. And that's it for today, guys. Be good to each other. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.